Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. Today's show features the amazing Addison Ames, who is a full body channel for Metatron, a high dimensional being specialized in spiritual development for Earth and humanity. This show, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, won the COV Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. Welp Magazine named it one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to. It's high ranking in self-improvement on Apple Podcasts, nominated for two People's, Cho People's Choice Awards, and for a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here at Access Consciousness. They do energy work. You can take a class or become a facilitator. Go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and I'm a media visibility expert. I am a book writing coach, and you can join my Zoom class. It's twice a month live with me, teaching you how to take the idea of your book and write a wonderful book and complete to publish. I also have a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international best-selling status, and I do all the heavy lifting for the author. And finally, I teach spiritual messengers how to be interviewed on radio and podcast to get massive results. If you would like to learn how to do these things and become visible at a time when ooh, your soul came here to do that, go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift it's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. My guest today is Addison Ames. He is an awakened teacher, channel, healer, thought leader, and business consultant and executive coach. Addison has gone through the awakening of self and today addresses a range of topics from a multidimensional perspective. Addison is known as a full body channel for Metatron. And in his work, Addison shares high knowledge and wisdom that can help people through life's situations, changes, challenges, and opportunities. He helps people heal, awaken, know, and grow, and understand the world around them. He is a certified Reiki Grandmaster, Reiki Crystal Master, Crystal Specialist, Animal Reiki Master, Quantum Healer, and Angelic Healer. He's currently based in the United States, where he travels frequently and works with clients internationally. And if you'd like to learn more about him, go to his website, AddisonAmes.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Addison to Dare to Dream. It's so good to have you. Debbie, thank you for that wonderful and kind introduction. I really appreciate it. And it's a joy to be on the show with you. Yeah, you know, I guess we had a surrender. That's where I'm at, Addison, <laughs> because we've been in contact and I, I know you're on my radar. And it's really interesting because I think when that happens, the universe finds a way. It just things fall away. So the, I don't know that I want to say the right thing because I don't want to make the other person the wrong thing. But listen, somebody had to reschedule. I reached out. You're here. But I, I really feel in my bones you were meant to be here. I don't even know if Metatron cleared the way for us. <laughs> but this feels really right. Yeah, it's amazing how it worked out. And, you know, I've been watching your show for for a while now and really enjoy you, your style, um, kind of your heritage your radio, radio heritage, which I really honor and love what you do. So um, so it, it is amazing how the stars aligned and we're able to talk today. So, you know, when the opportunity came up to jump in and take this uh, this time slot, I said, yes, I want to do it. It's the right thing to do. Right thing to do, right time, yeah. right person. I think it is so interesting. Well, we all pretty much come from some kind of interesting career background, yours in business specifically. Mm -hmm. So with this business background of yours originally, were you always aware of Metatron and these archangels, these beings who are ready to work with you through you? Did that happen very young or did something occur? How did that career transition come about? It's a great question. So <clears throat> my background is in corporate and international marketing. 
And, um, you know, I lived in New York City, worked in some key cities in Europe, the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, worked in a range of industries. And, you know, I really enjoyed it. So, you know, my transition was um, one of what I call awakening, where I just had my eyes opened and began to see and know things differently, begin to see myself differently, see the world around me differently. And it was a series of events that happened, you know, like maybe over six to eight months in all focus and sincerity. Um, but I was always a very spiritually minded person. So even growing up, I was very spiritually minded. At that point in time, it was more fundamentalist Christian in terms of my upbringing. But there was always this very profound sensitivity that I had. Um, and then, you know, began to really focus on business, but still was very kind of an enlightened person in a way, really nice, loved people, a lot of love. I would say love has always been ever present in my life and, and has only grown. But then, you know, this, the series of awakening events happened and that's where I met Metatron, my guides and other angels and archangel angels and helpers on my way. Um, really until that time, I didn't know Metatron. And so, um, one of the things that happened is Metatron came in during that time and started to work with me really closely and began to kind of open my eyes to new, new high information and help me to know and grow. And during that time, he also taught me how to channel. And it was kind of like ongoing channeling classes that I would participate in sometimes almost daily. And, um, and through that, it kind of <clears throat> led me to a place where Metatron and my guides said, it's time for you to leave working in marketing full time and start your own spiritually minded business, which is <clears throat> what is reflected now on my website. It's, it's evolved and advanced quite a bit since I first launched my business, but what's there now is kind of reflective of what started. And um, so I quit my job, started doing this work full time and uh, started doing this work full time. But, um, you know, the work has evolved. So now I even do what I call awakened business consulting and executive coaching. So I didn't really throw away everything that I learned in the business world. You know, I got to a point where I said, and my guides encouraged me, even Metatron said, you know, business is changing. There are some real enlightened businesses out there that care about governance, social impact, the earth, the environment. And that's a growing part of the business community. Work with them, help them, lift them. So I established that part of my business. But, you know, now I do, I help people with their personal timelines to lay the old rest, heal and get new. I do soul work. I do uh, archangelic healing, where I work with the four primary archangels to help people heal and restore themselves. Um, I teach courses on core fundamental human understandings that have new enlightened ideas attached to them, like relationships, love, understanding love, how to build your love. Um, I even offer a premarital course and other core human understandings you can find on my website. But all, all this to answer your question is, um, my life dramatically changed in these awakening events. Metatron came in, started to work with me really closely. I didn't know him before. Now I know him really well. I work with him daily and I'm a full body channel for Metatron. So, um, so it's been an, a, re a really exciting adventure. I've always been very sensitive, very loving and kind, spiritually minded but definitely my life changed after these awakening events happened. Amazing. Yeah. I, when I'm listening to you, I'm thinking about there's this incredible TV show and I may get the channel wrong, but I think it's on Netflix. It's called Omens. And I don't know if you've seen it, yeah. highly recommended, right? It's the angel and the devil. They're brilliant English actors and Metatron, the archangel is played by John Hamm hilariously. <laughs> so yeah it, it's uh it's a show uh written by neil gaiman and you may know neil gaiman he's a wonderful creator mm -hmm. wonderful yes. writer and the show is very good i've i've watched all the episodes it's it's very very good very entertaining 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, but I, I'm assuming, because I know you'll be channeling later, that we'll have a different type of Metatron come through than the one that John Hamm portrays. Yeah, you know, the Metatron that I work with, and it's funny that you say it that way, you know, the, the way that I see channeling is the channel plays a role in kind of the personality that the being presents as. So, you know, there are lots of people that channel Met Metatron around the world. I'm not the only one that does it. There are other people who channel Metatron. And I watch a lot of them because I'm always curious to see what Metatron presents as. But um, they're all a little bit different. But the core message from what I see, I'd love to hear your opinion if you have one, is that it's generally around ascension, the evolution of the human and the human experience, and really helping humanity rise to new higher levels. So the Metatron that I work with, if you want to think of it that way, it's like a unique understanding of Metatron, is as a very high multidimensional being who works as an archangel, but is actually many different things. And one of the teachings that Metatron, as I work with them, has is for the human, you are many things. You're more than a one thing. And so he says, I'm more than just an archangel. That's like one of the jobs that I have, one of the things that I do, but I'm actually a much higher being and I present in many different ways. So, you know, his message is one of you can encouragement you as a human humanity, you can be better. You can ascend, which really is just moving and changing and moving into new higher ways of existence. Be nicer, be kinder, more loving, love, joy, peace, patience. Those are things he talks a lot about. And, um, and so, and his, his personality is very fascinating to me. He's a lot, he's a lot of personality. Many people say he's a big energy and that's definitely the experience that I have with him. Um, he's a teacher. Uh, he's a speaker. He's, he's a very good speaker. And, um, and I, I think a real joy to work with. So I hope you'll enjoy him when we bring him in a, in a little bit in today's conversation. I'm going to riff off of that uh, because, Please. and thank you for even inviting me to that conversation. I actually don't know Metatron. So I looked, I looked it up before you came on so I could get somewhat prepared and I found this information, so I'd like to hear your feedback, that Metatron is the angel chosen by God to be a scribe and take down his notes into the tablets known as the words of God. Metatron was known as the greatest of angels in Jewish myths, and I hate the word myths even, but <clears throat> Judaism, let's just say. And the Merkaba tradition emphasizes the role of Metatron as the knower of secrets. So according to three Enoch, he was wise in the secrets and master of the mysteries. And he was the one who received secrets from the angels and from the Lord. So does that concur with what you know? Well, here's what I'll say is <clears throat> everyone works in their own way. Everyone sees their own things. Like, you know, for you, I know you the way that I know you. There are other people that know you in different ways. People maybe maybe just know you as a radio personality from the old days. Your family sees you in different ways. So Metatron is a big energy, a very high dimensional, high energy. <clears throat> in fact, many times he says, we are Metatron. We are Metatron on high. We're not a one, we're a many. So what I would say is whatever people see is an aspect of Metatron. He has many, many different aspects. So in the way that I work with him, he's much more professorial. He's much more like a teacher. He, do, he does have a lot of wisdom, but he takes the wisdom and he breaks it down in ways that are really empowering and encouraging for humanity to use. Okay, that's amazing. And I also read somewhere that he was the one who took some people out of Egypt, something like that. And I thought, oh, that's pretty cool because my born name is Deborah, like the mm -hmm. biblical D-E-B-O-R-A-H. And that's why my mom named me that because she was a prophetess, a great leader, a great judge and helped bring the people out of Egypt at a pretty intense time. So I thought, oh, 
maybe I knew Metatron somewhere along the timelines for me. Could be. Well, in, in, in kind of the way that I see Metatron, he has been very involved with humanity since its inception. One of the ways that he works with humanity is really helping it to evolve. So helping it to really move along its idea progression. And that's the one of the ways that he looks at humanity, or as we, you know, humans, is we're ideas. Like Debbie, you're an idea, a great idea. I, Addison, I'm an idea. I'm a great idea. We're all great ideas, but if you look at our life, we're all kind of ideas progressing and developing. We're all kind of growing and knowing and all this kind of thing. So even as, let's say, you know, Egyptian peoples, pharaohs, whatever it may be, world leaders, I think Metatron is very involved with really almost everybody in some way. A lot of the people that I work with, <clears throat> you know, on a one-to-one -one basis or even in groups say, oh yeah, I know Metatron, I work with Metatron. So he tends to be a very big hands-on energy. So I wouldn't be surprised if you have in this life or other lives worked with Metatron. Well, that's exciting. <clears throat> that's amazing, exciting. Yeah. Um, I just got hit with a wave of energy. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that presence is here right now. I just want to acknowledge that. I'm not going to stop where we are, but I felt something very profound. And it's usually very puddling for me and um, relaxing, really relaxing. So I welcome that energy being with us. And I have a couple of questions. The first one is, you mentioned, I think it's Reiki animal sessions, and forgive me, I don't recall exactly what it was, but I want to know more about that, how you work with animals, what kind of things you do. For sure. So, you know, kind of going back to my um, awakening story, <clears throat> a key part of my, of my awakening story is Reiki. Um, Metatron and my guides guided me to start working with a Reiki master during that time. And uh, she was absolutely wonderful. She's still a dear friend of mine. And I worked for, with her for probably six or seven months um, very, in a very hands-on way. And um, I saw her probably once or twice a week for six or seven months. And it was very healing for me. I released a lot of old energies. It was a real opportunity for me to kind of reset myself for the work that was ahead of me. So I really love Reiki. And so after I kind of finished my work with her, which was a real joy, I um, was guided to learn Reiki. So I'm now a Reiki grandmaster. Um, I received a certification in animal Reiki. So I'm an, a, a Reiki animal, a, a, an animal Reiki master, that's it. And a, a crystal Reiki master. So I learned a number of different Reiki modalities because I really was really, grateful for the role that it played in my life. And so um, with animals, it's similar to humans. There's a few differences in that the animals really know when they're done. And animals will communicate, as you may know. Do you, do you, do you, do you like animals? Do you have, a, have pets? Yes, I currently, I've had cats before, and today I have three dogs. Beautiful. Do they communicate with you? One, yes, I feel they all do. Yeah. And with, I mean, I understand them. With one yeah. in particular, um, it's off the charts. It's like we're talking. I know, oh, she needs water. She needs to go outside. She wants to go, in, it's true. She wants to go in the bathtub. I mean, hilarious sometimes, but I feel her profoundly. Mm. So beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I, I really see animals communicate. Animals need healing. Animals many times hold residual energies from the owner and uh, because animals can absorb the owner or owner's energy and they're he all animals are healing to humans, I think. So, um, so I really learned how to understand, communicate with animals. So um, I don't work with animals anymore. I only work with humans now. But when I first started you know, doing all of this work, I work with everything from dogs to horses. So I've done Reiki on horses before, which is really an amazing thing to do. 
Um, they're beautiful animals with big heart spaces. I really love them. And um, animals communicate, animals need healing, and sometimes they can hold residual energies from their owners that need cleaning and clearing, and Reiki can be really helpful with, with that. So, um, you know, I work with animals probably for a first, the first couple of years when I started doing spiritual work. Now I really focus on humans, but it taught me a lot about the very important role that animals from small to big play in our lives. They're very, very important and very healing for us. Hmm. And very loving. The, the greatest love you'll ever have, I think. Oh, yeah, totally. Amazing. And the other thing you do this timelines. So I'm mm -hmm. really curious about how that works. I, I mean, that's an mm -hmm. itch because you can't really get into, of course, all the techniques. But what I mean is what's possible. What's possible as far as someone's timeline with health, with career, with finances, with love, with everything in life, everything that impacts us. Can you literally alter somebody's timeline? Alter, is that like a DNA programming? How does, how does that manifest? Well, the first thing I say to people, <clears throat> which can be very awakening, is that, did you know that you have your own personal timelines, plural? Mm -hmm. And most people go, I didn't. I, I've heard about timelines. I knew there were timelines out there, timelines for Earth. I've seen it in movies, on TV shows, these kinds of things, because in the way that I see it, timelines are becoming more and more prevalent in human consciousness because hum humans are ready to be able to understand and master their own timelines. It's very important right now. So <clears throat> in the way that I see it, we all have our own timelines and timelines are like holders of our stuff. That's a very simple colloquial way to put it. Timelines hold our stuff. They're like little capsules of energies, experiences, um, memories, all the things that we experience that make us us throughout time. And there's many different ways to see and experience time. But you could say sequence of events because we all kind of get up in the morning, we put our pants on first, then our shoes afterwards, you know, there's a sequence of events, events that we go through. So our timelines hold and organize all of our stuff, all of our experiences, energies, etc., against a map or canvas of time. And it can be this life, past lives, alternative lives, ancestral and generational stuff laid out in timelines that we still access sometimes. And it can also be future, future in this life and future lives sometimes. It's really pretty cool. So as I work with people on their timelines, it's generally looking to see what needs to be healed, folded, closed, or collapsed, which is like a very specific action taken to really move a timeline that doesn't need to be accessed anymore, accessing those energies, memories, etc to really collapse it and move it out of the way, not destroying those energies because they're all part of us, but moving them out of the active timeline matrix so that one is not actively utilizing that timeline energy in the here and now. So and, let me ask you, yeah, sure. are you the one who goes in and you see the timeline and you make suggestions to the person or you just go in and clean it up or is it the person who comes to you and makes some suggestions? How does that work? What do you see? It's a, be it's a beautiful process. And thank you for that question. It is a collaborative partnership process. So um, the timelines offering that I have, <clears throat> they're multi-session experiences. So five two-hour sessions, seven two-hour sessions, or 10 two-hour sessions. So they're pretty intensive experiences. In the first session, we kind of set things up, we share information, the client and I, I understand kind of what they're dealing with, I get a lot of information from them. I also do some teaching, some timeline tutorials, and some empowerment to help them to really understand what's going on. And then in the remainder of the sessions, we do what I call timelines journeys. So the person will actually lay down, relax, close their eyes, and I'm there, we turn our videos off on Zoom, and I'm there audibly, and I act as their guide, 
and we travel together or journey together in the mind of all to their timelines. And so people actually experience seeing, feeling, touching, hearing, sometimes tasting and smelling what's happening in those timelines. And we work together with my guides, Metatron is part of it. And if the person has guides and or angels, we bring them in as well. So their team is present. And we look together to see what timelines need to be addressed. So the easy answer to your question is, it is a collaborative experience where I and the person go together and then we assess, I make recommendations, and the person decides what to do. So it's a very respectful process. It's that person's energy, it's that person's life, that person's stuff. So nothing is ever closed, collapsed, folded, or even healed without that person's okay. Yeah, let's do it. My guides say yes, my heart says yes, my soul says yes, let's do it. And so um, once that decision has been made, then we take the appropriate action. And throughout the series of sessions, it's progressive. And we go through deciding what needs to be healed, moved out of the way, kind of help organize the current timelines and sometimes send them the energies that they need to be empowered. And then decide if, we, if they wanna open up some new timelines to build new life experiences, like new career, new family, new partnership, new financial situ situations, and other related new things in their life. Ooh, I love that. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, c clients find the journeys very rewarding and, you know, supernatural, I guess is the best way to say it, like a real extraordinary experience. Ooh, yeah, how beautiful to take care of all the past or current and then with choice, have something new and be able to go out from that experience to live it, to, that it's real. Yeah. Oh. And I, I find a lot of what people are facing, mm -hmm. ancestral and generational damage, mm. um, and also womb damage. Mm. So one of the things that I've even learned in the process is how much a fetus, a little baby is impacted by sound, frequency, vibration, energies, uh, mind waves, all kinds of influences can really impact the fetus or the baby in very, very powerful ways. So I find in many, in many experiences with my clients, we travel back to what I call timeline one. And <clears throat> that is, generally the very first timeline that they form when they are conceived and that holds it can hold a lot of traumatic energies that can be healed and released and sometimes we even fold close or collapse that timeline so really that person can get free of the old focus on the here and now and be able to be present enough to operate <laughs> and build new life experiences for themselves that is such an amazing service and offering. It's really cool. Right? That it's sounds like 90 years of therapy that had just done seven sessions. It can be, it can be. It can be very transformative for sure. And I find that's what a lot of, that's what a lot of humanity is dealing with is getting stuck in the old, you know? and living old past energies and memories, reliving old stuff constantly, and it kind of gets into a cyclic churning motion. And you know that's one of the things Metatron talks about an awful lot is humanity, get new, move into the new. You talk about ascension, spiritual development, evolution, motivation, inspiration, all these things. The more you kind of sit in the old ways of being, doing, seeing yourself in the world around you, the more you do that, the more you stay there. But when you can kind of lay the old to rest, really live in the here and now, be very, very present, and then decide from a place of presence, be, and then decide what you want to do, it can be a very powerful place to be. That is so interesting. When you say, Addison, 
about like these machinations happening again. I just want to see if I get this correct. So an example would be something happens to a person in the past or the recent past, and they're mulling it over constantly in their head. Maybe they're even speaking out loud to, you know, things they wish they had said to the person or enacting somehow that original wound, if you will, or original hurt. And is that the kind of thing you're saying? Because I imagine that is not allowing someone to be very present. It can be, you know, I, I'm very careful not to give prognoses without actually really looking at the person because everyone at the soul level is all kind of acting out their own journey, you know? So until I'm actually working with a person and really understand what their soul journey is and working with Metatron and my guides and their guides, if they have them to be able to really understand the path forward, I try, to, try not to make judgments but it can be old energies that they're connected to either through timelines or other connective devices and they're kind of drawing that energy in almost like through a straw and that is affecting them now in those machinations where they're just like you know argh, churning that old stuff and until the old is laid to rest it's really hard to move into the new okay and um you'll have to forgive me i have a one of my three dogs, this little one, is really trying to be a man right now and scare off a delivery person. I'm sure okay. it works wonders. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, and and are you also into, open to, involved with the extraterrestrial mm -hmm. world at all? Do any extraterrestrial beings come through you? They don't come through me, um, but you know, a lot of my clients are star seeds you know it's pretty common in the world today um and you know many of them have extraterrestrial guides so um i don't work with them directly and i only channel metatron that's that's the only being that i channel but i'm you know very familiar with the extraterrestrial community and in the way that they work with many people beautiful we're on the same page here yeah. So I, if it's okay with you, I would love to shift this over to talking to Metatron. And sure. is there anything you need to know as you prepare? Well, enjoy the conversation. Uh, he, he probably will be pretty conversational with you. So he may ask you questions. And if you have questions for him, please feel, to, feel free to jump in. Uh, he tends to be very interactive and a lot of fun. So I think you'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, just give me a moment to connect. <clears throat> and we are here, we are Metatron on high, and we are, and we are, and we are. Now, dear Debbie, we thank you for your time today, and we are happy and delighted to be here. As you know yourself, you are. <clears throat> now, we talk a lot about knowing because knowing is a way that the human presents itself. The human understands, knows, and goes. Now, many people in the spiritual community say, well, Metatron, you talk so much about mind and knowing. What about spirit? What about song? What about frequency and vibration? And what about all that comes along? And there are many parts and pieces of the human. So when we teach a few parts and pieces, it doesn't necessarily mean that we negate the rest because you are and you are. The human is not a one thing, but it is a many thing. So as it presents in the way that it presents, it is understanding itself <clears throat> in just a few things, yet behind the mask of the one, like the face that you see in the mirror, there are many things working in the background. So you have a body and your body is always doing things. Your heart beats, yet you don't need to think heartbeat. You have a mind, yet you don't have to think mind think. You have many parts and pieces that work, what you would say, automatically in your favor. So in the same way that you have a mind and a brain, and yes, a heart and a soul, and there are many other things, please know that you are only now discovering the human. We'll say this one more time, dear Debbie and audience out there, you are only now discovering the human. 
because as science, and yes, we are supporters of science, they haven't got it all figured out, and we are supporters of spirituality, ascension, evolution in the multitudinous of the human. So as you, human experience that you are now, coming to understand things in deeper, higher, and more, with loving care, we say, you haven't got it all figured out yet. So as we Metatron, a high dimensional being who drops in to help in the way that we work with him, Addison, he's a very nice guy, we like him, we work with him in a way that may not be the way that we work with everybody else we work with. We are in an individuated understanding, just like you all are, working in the way that is needed. So as we would work with you, Debbie, if you ever would like for us to, we would work with you in the way that Debbie needs us to. So as we present to different people, we put on a mask of Metatron, which is a way to be that is true to us for sure, because we have a job to do here on earth with humanity. <clears throat> Yet we present in a way that works. If it doesn't work, well, we don't have a job. <laughs> we work in ways that work with the ones we work with. So Can as I, we may work- I ask you a question? Yes, of course, go ahead. Thank you. When you say you work with the individual uh, and that you would work with this person, this person, et cetera, exactly for where they're at. And then you said you would work with me in a particular way. So as an example, how would you work with me? What about me would predicate how you would go about working with me? <clears throat> you are all souls. We'll talk about the group of humans first, and then you, Debbie. The group of souls that comprise the human presence now is a very varied mix. So there are souls literally from here and there and just about everywhere in between. Souls drop into the human experience all carrying different things. They're all carrying different things, to be clear. So as souls drop in, <clears throat> they have different jobs to do. So we Metatron work in different ways with each soul in the way that works with them on their journey. Now for you, does this make sense to you, by the way? Yes, I'm totally tracking. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. So for you, you are an advanced soul. Do you know this? Yes. Hmm hard to be here on this planet. Yes, thank you. It is. So we would work with you in a way that we would call advanced teachings, teaching you things that really challenge you in the expanse, in the expansion of your presence, which includes your soul, your heart, your mind, and your multidimensional self. Because your soul is here on earth to serve, but also expand. Does that resonate with you? 100%, it does. So we are advanced teachers if we need to be. We are basic teachers if we need to be. We are transformation specialists if we need to be, and we like transformation. An idea of what humanity is going through is always transforming, always changing, always growing to new and higher heights. So as humanity knows and grows in new ways, there are different classes or classrooms of experience. So some people may be in grade one and some may be in a graduate program. So it just depends on the soul growth. Now, there are advanced souls here on earth, on your earth, who are, <clears throat> let's say, working through more preliminary studies because the soul has asked them to. So in that, what they are doing is working on, let's say, preliminary or basic studies, sometimes challenge, intrigue, and other. <clears throat> and in this, they are bringing in very high vibrations, frequencies, and mindsets to a low form. So they are, in a way, incognito in form, yet their function is high. Does this make sense to you? 
It does. What a strange, interesting choice. It is. <laughs> You're why, not, why not just go be go an Elohim? Why not just go be an advanced life force or an be part of an advanced civilization if one is advanced? Why would the choice be to come into a lower form and work these things out? Mm -hmm. To rise it, to raise it, to lift it. Listen, the world that you live in is a complex place. Do you know this? Oh my, yes, I do. Yeah, yes. That's one of the reasons why you probably say sometimes, get me out of here. Have you ever said that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, get me out of here. I don't know why, why I want to be here. It is a complex place. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> just like, let's use business as a tool to teach here. Let's say you, you work in a very large corporate organization, very large, works in many different countries. It is highly complex. It's a big deal. In this big corporation, let's say a multi-billion dollar enterprise, a big thing, there are lots of people at many different levels and stages doing many different kinds of job, many different kinds of work, many different kinds of roles, and many different kinds of do. I do this, I do that, I do the other. It's a complex organization. So it is a little bit like Earth. It is a highly complex organization that is very important on the universal stage. And it is also a place that requires many different kinds of be and do. Because in order to get Earth to where it needs to be in the evolution of all, it takes a lot of push. It takes a lot of be, it takes a lot of do. So just like <clears throat> if you send in a very specialized team to do a very intense job, you have all the right beings in place in order to accomplish the job. So earth has been built and in a way preordained to have all the right beings locked in in order to push the earth to new and higher heights what we say many times is the earth and humanity is going to new and higher places and spaces so it is necessary to have many different high souls, Elohim, there are Elohim souls on earth doing different kinds of jobs, you may or may not know this. There are seraphimic souls, there are many different kinds of souls that come in, starseeds and all, and <clears throat> are bringing in their own ideals, their own frequencies, their own know, to be able to turn the earth in a way that gets it to where it needs to go. Questions? Oh, always. <laughs> Thank you so much. Woof. So good. Good. Um, yeah, I'm going to start with this and I may bounce around so <clears throat> you can uh, track with me. That would be beautiful. I understand that you talk about frequency, that frequency as a healer, uh, frequency as a changer. I sing. And I believe that happens when I sing, that through my voice, through the frequency, uh, my senses, it creates love that alters people. That, and maybe there's more that I don't know. But I was wondering if you'll share about frequency, forms of frequency, what it does, and how it can be used. For sure. You sing. Yes. And we thank you for singing. What is frequency? Can you give us a definition, please? Well, I, yeah, I'll do my best. So frequency to me is if it were slowed down and the eye could see it, that it would be a wave. Of course, people watching YouTube can actually see my hands moving, but it would be something that would move much like a sound wave, that there would be a tone, a vibration attached to it, um, a harmonic or disharmonic attached to it, but frequency that it's got, it's not electric, but it has um, it's something palpable to it that moves through the air and as it connects with, creates change. Yes. So <clears throat> frequency in definition is a measure or an understanding of 
sound. Frequency is sound. Sound is frequency, and there is no frequency without sound. Do you understand that? I do, yeah. Yeah. So when you sing, what do you emit from yourself? Air, <laughs> mm -hmm. notes, yes. music. And notes are sound measured by frequency. So frequency is a measure. It's a measuring device of sound. There is no frequency without sound. There is no sound without frequency is a way to understand it. So as you sing, what you are conveying is, are notes, sounds, words, all these kinds of things. Yet with it comes what we would call a higher frequency or a higher no that comes through you. Now listen. As you sing, there is what you would call your frequency and your notes, yet what is coming through you is higher no. So as we look at you and understand you, you are powerful in the way that you sing and you are powerful in the impact that it has. So you put out and it is received. You emit and there is reception. So what we see really coming from you more than anything is the power of your soul, the power of your no, the power of your cumulative experience, which is accumulated by your soul, which is Debbie. There is no Debbie without your soul. And your soul has been and been and been and been and been and been and been. And your soul in the experience that you have now has dropped in and allows Debbie to be. And in that soul accumulation of many things which are really experience understood as frequency, vibration, mindsets, experience, and what we would call know that emits from you all the time. And as you sing, which is a very personal, we think, expression of yourself, a very powerful and beautiful one, we encourage you to sing, 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 is your soul really is the one doing the singing. And as your soul expresses in true form and function through sing, note, frequency, and vibration, which is the tension of frequency working together to create the sound, what you have is a beautiful story being told that is more than frequency and vibration. Behind the frequency and vibration is what we call high no. You could call it high frequency if you want, which is your accumulated soul no. And in that sharing, and it is Debbie indeed sharing, what you are doing is sharing your wealth of soul knowledge, which activates, turns on, excites, and frees people that experience you. And this is not just when you sing, but when you talk, teach, and do all the things that you do. You are a powerful translator of high energy through soul no, which includes frequency, vibration, and lots of other things. Questions? Oh my gosh. No, I'm completely receiving 100% yes. with you. You are a powerful being. Do you know this? Ish. I know ish. <laughs> we encourage you to know yourself. Mm -hmm. As you know yourself, you are. The more that you know yourself as powerful and the accumulation of greatness, the more that you are that, and the people need you to be that. Wow, that's beautiful. That's a really nice perspective. I wonder how many people out there listening think about that in their life. People need me to be powerful. They need me to fully step in to why I came here to display and utilize my gifts and fully be me, uh, whatever that is. Um, thank you. I really received that so much. I know Metatron that you are known as the revealer of secrets, as the keeper of the mysteries, which I love. And I'm wondering if you'd lay one on us, meaning, would you transmit to us a really high secret, something 
we don't know about, something unprecedented that would help us to understand. And I'll say that in general, or yeah, let me leave that with you. I trust what will come through. For sure. The high secret is this, humanity goes on. So let's talk about this for a few minutes because this is a very empowering message and in a way a secret because humanity has really kind of thought to itself, we die pretty soon. Many of you know Stephen Hawking, a great scientist who has moved on, not that too long ago, and others who have said, we think humanity has maybe another 60, 80, or 100 years to go, and then it kills itself. Have you heard this, Debbie? Yes, definitely. Yeah. It's prevalent. What do you think? Do you think humanity dies in 60, 80, or 100 years? Well, it's such a good question. You know, for a long time, I really bought into some of the collective and the worry and the climate change. And, and there, although there are truths in it, just because of speaking to people like yourself or energies like yourself, I feel like there's been an illumination for me to understand the earth. She will carry on. Uh, she's a force unto herself. And that um, to understand better the real history of humanity rather than the one we've been fed, that they actually have been eradicated several times, eradicated themselves, but um, have come back many times. So you, I guess I hear you saying, Metatron, that we're not going anywhere. But will we be mutating? Will, be, will, will we be transmuted into a different form of humanity as we go forward? We hope so. So let's talk a little bit about this. So <clears throat> there is a grand plan for humanity and for Earth. Now, you live in Earth. We want you to understand your relationship to the Earth a little better. And you may say, well, Metatron, we're on top of the earth. Don't you know? Don't you see? Can't you feel it? Don't you know? <laughs> the truth is this, is earth <clears throat> is a mass ball indeed, yet its energy, atmosphere, and other extend well beyond what you think of as the surface of earth. Make sense? Yes, makes sense. So you are, in the way that we see it, you are inner earth beings. Because we see earth in totality and completion as a pretty big place in space. Granted, it's not huge, but it's bigger than what you think. So earth, you look at it and you go, we're on top of it and that's it. And that's the human mentality. So part of what we Metatron like to do is say, let's break up your current thinking so that you can think again, think new. Think higher and brighter and better. You with us? Oh, yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. All right, so stay with us. There's more fun stuff coming. So Earth extends beyond where you sit right now on your sofa or wherever it may be in your house. Earth goes way, 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 way beyond. So a way for you to understand the importance of Earth and the importance of you to Earth is that you are inside of Earth it. In fact, we'd like for you and all of your audience members to say, I'm inside of Earth. I'm an inner Earth, which if you think of the outer limits of where Earth is, you're pretty far inside of it. From that perspective, which is a fun one to think about, you are inner Earth beings. Pretty wild, isn't it? It's wild, yes. So you are encapsulated in Earth the being, the physicality, because it is physical, even, you can't, even though you can't see it all, in the overall understanding of what Earth is, you are in it. You're inside of it. Now, you spend a lot of time in your house. You're inside of your house. Because you live in your house, do you, Debbie, take care of your house? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's really important to me. Why? And the outside, too. <laughs> Why is your house so important to you? Well, I may be different than other people's answer, but for me, it's a lot about energy. It's about beauty. Beauty is very important to me and energy is important. So when things are in place or things look nice or feel nice, it's a huge contribution to me and, um, and to what I do. It supports me and I feel like it's a symbiotic relationship. An easy answer we offer up to you <clears throat> is 
I live inside of it. Do you see the simplicity of the answer? Why does one take care of their home? I live in it. Do you get it? Yes, I live in it, so it makes take sense. Care it's taken care of. Yeah, it gives you shelter. It is your place, your space where you live your life out. You have things there. You have all your stuff there. I live inside of it. Therefore, I take care of it because I'm in it. It's a very simple understanding. We recognize everything that you said and we honor it. And yes, it is and it is so. But in the teaching, which is very simple, is what one lives inside of one cares for. So as the human lives inside of Earth, we encourage you, please take care of it. Take care of Earth, please. You live inside of it. Now, Earth is going to high and special places and spaces. Earth, as you said earlier, so beautifully goes on and on and on and on and on for a long, long, long time. So please take care of it. You all are governors officially and other of it. Please take care of it. You are inside of it. It is your house. It is your home. It is the place that you live in. Care for it. You're encapsulated in it. Now, humanity also, as a governor, carrier, investor, and liver in Earth, is going places and spaces too. Humanity is a very important race that is evolving to new and higher heights. We, Metatron, and many others care about humanity. And so what we say to you in honor of your question, tell us the secret, we'll tell, we're telling you a few, is that humanity goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on, because we all like the idea. The human, the divine human, we call it many times on earth, is special. You are special and you are going places and spaces. So just as your body, which is a part of you, it is not all that you are, but it is a component of you, we would say you are primarily soul, primarily, with other stuff added in. You are a, you are a multitude, you are a multiplicity, you are a multidimensional thing. Soul drives you, it is you, it is your essence. It is that which becomes you and lives you. So as you are in your home, your house, your earth, if you wish, your vessel, if you wish it, please take care of it. Because the human goes on 60, 80, 100 years, much farther than that, it goes on and on and on. So we Metatron will demystify many things, which means we clear the mist. So you can see clearly, Many people say, I, I can't see clearly. I'm not in clarity. I don't know what's going on. Help me to see. We demystify and say, you don't die, you live. Now, the challenge we give you is get it together. And this is not you, Debbie, but it is humanity. Get it together. Get focus. Get with your soul. Get with your mind. Get with your heart. Get with your guides, whatever you got. Get with your multidimensional self and pull it together and say, I live, I do. I don't give it away. I live life to the fullest today and every day. I don't just shut the light, light off and hide in the bed. I turn the light on and I say, what do I need to be and do to experience life to the fullest? Because it is in the experience of life that the human and the human soul gains. It is the growth through experience and playing out the logic game of life, which it is. It is all logic being played out. It is soul, which carries logic. It is heart, which carries logic. It is mind, which carries logic. And in a very high way, what is happening is humanity is carrying out some very specific logic terms that allow it to know and grow, which is basically, if I do this, this. If I do that, this. If, then. So in a way, to speak to the word that you used earlier so beautifully, dear, and beautiful, 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 beautiful Debbie, choice. Do you recall using that word? 
Yes, absolutely. Yes. If then. Humans, if you think you are not a logic race, we encourage you to think, which is logic, again. Choice matters. Yes, flow. You've got to go with the flow. Your heart knows and you go. You got to do it. it was, it's what happens. Yet in the human experience, you experience choice. What do I do today? You cho chose to talk to us today. You chose to talk to Addison today. You chose to do this, that, and the other. So in the choice, you're always saying, if then, if I do this, this happens. If then, if then, if then. Choice. It's choice logic. So the meaning of this we give to you is humanity goes on, but we Metatron and all those who work to lift Earth to new higher heights, we are all saying to you, choose high. You have choice, which is logic. Think about it. Talk to your heart, your soul, your guides, your people, your husband, your wife, your people, places, and things. Talk to your kids. They probably know more than you do. And get the high choice, high logic, high thoughts, high frequencies, and vibrations, and say, I choose high. I need to do this. I desire to do this. My heart, my soul is calling me to do this, and I'm going with a high choice. And in that high choice, the world changes. Have you, Debbie, ever seen people who choose low? Oh, of course. Yes, we all have. Yeah, it's sad. It is. The high choice is not always glad. We acknowledge that. Sometimes there are high choices which are difficult and challenging and hard. Yet, the high choice always yields much. So in the teaching, the big secret is this, earth goes on, humanity goes on, but in order to do it, it's what happens in the time of all, but in order to get there, because there is sequence of events, choice and logic that humanity must do. If you think humanity is a race without choice, what are you looking at? Think again, use choice logic and choose high, please. It gets you where you need to, have to, want to go. Does this answer your question, Debbie? You know, that is such a big piece. Yes. And I'm thinking every morning I do a shamanic practice. I, I know some people meditate. I do a shamanic practice with my feet in Mother Earth. And one of the things I end with when my practice is done is to set an intention or intentions for the day. And I really like what you're saying because what you're saying actually encapsulates all the intentions. There wouldn't have to be something so specific if on a daily basis, when I end my practice, I say my intention is to act, think, be, and do high, to choose high. Boom, mic drop, nothing else needed that informs everything else I would do through the day. Indeed, and we thank you for this practice and we encourage those listening, if you feel called, if you so choose to adopt the practice that Debbie spoke of or something like it. It is a good one. When you set your intentions, when you set your motives, you are able to change the actions the old logic into the new. And as the world changes, you change. And as you change, the world changes. We'd like to talk about this, if we may. Debbie, maybe we talk about something else briefly here? Sure. Uh, how many things I want to ask you. Yes, I want to ask you, um, will there be open contact with extraterrestrials? And if so, of the many many races that are out there, the many incredible civilizations, especially the benevolent ones, are there any we can expect to interact with soon? And if so, how soon? Well, we would say this is you're already interacting with them. I'm referring more to open contact. I know since the beginning of history that we've interacted. I also know that our DNA is comprised of that we are that, right? There is no separation there. We actually are extraterrestrial. And so 
it's just about re-meeting uh, maybe some of the hybrids or the other extraterrestrials that will be relevant to humanity going forward and openly. For sure. <clears throat> the idea of open contact we think is coming. Now we are careful with prognoses because there are many timelines shifting and many things changing. So we see you all working towards this with interest. The question is really to the high beings that are out there, when are you truly ready for it? It is a question of high consciousness. So what we encourage you all to do is become more soul beings. Let your soul shine through. Because what is happening and what has happened, as we have talked about earlier, there are all of these high energy souls dropping into the human experience. This is happening for a multitude of reasons and logic patterns so that humanity very quickly and wisely awakens, becomes more expansive and open. So uh, what we see is there is more work to be done. The way to get there is to say, each and every one, I let my soul shine through. I let my soul be. Soul, what do you want to do? Soul, lead me. Your soul is your best guide. Soul, teach me. And in that expansiveness of mind or high consciousness allowed in, you as a race and form and function and structure and other become more able to handle these kinds of concepts. So there are lots of things and opportunities being dropped in now to the human race to get it there and to kind of push the door open little by little. What we see is there's more work to do on the individual level, so allow your soul to shine through. Does this answer your question? Yes, absolutely. I appreciate it so much and it concurs a lot with others like yourself that I've heard speaking about it. So. It's, it's a powerful message. We need to get it together. It is possible, depends on the timeline. And yeah, it's about doing the inner work, healing, 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 clearing, ancestral, current trauma, all of it, behaviors. Um, so let me ask you this, because that, that leads me to this next curiosity, which is if you have any wisdom teachings about the concept of divine love and compassion, because that would really help humanity right now. How can we embody that? How can we organically exude that and do that? For sure. Now, what we Metatron do with this guy is we have specific messages that we deliver. Now, the type of message tends to be very practical, real world solutions to everyday situations. Does this make sense? Real world okay. solutions every day. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And this, this, we think, in the way that we work with him, helps people an awful lot, helps them a tremendous amount. Because as high love, divine love, and other, there's a lot of love out there that is very helpful to the human and the human race and the earth that you live inside of. As all of these love, ideas, energies, vibrations, and others drop into the human race, you all are adopting them it is very complex, by the way. And that mixes in with your heart, your soul, and your mind, really driven by your soul, which has its own understandings of love and what love is and how to show it and glow it. And all of these different love concepts, energies, and others bind together within you. Now, you are a very real person. You're more than that, but you're also Debbie. You're many, 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 many things. You're a beautiful, 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 complex, very high, very advanced being, but you're Debbie. It's all kind of part of you, you very advanced soul. In your life, you're Debbie to many people, and you are showing love. You are exhibiting love. I love you, and it looks like this. I love you, and it looks like this. I love you. And it looks like this. And the way that you show love to the different other beings, dogs, humans, or others in your life is true 
in that there are constants that come from you. And then there are aspects or dimensions of your love that turn and show and connect in different ways. Are you with us? Yes, I am really with so, you. Very good. So we encourage you all to think about this. Is love in a way is one thing, all is love, yet love is many things, just like our teaching about us and our teaching about the human. One thing, sure. Many things, for sure. So love for the human is many things. So we encourage people to get in touch with their soul love, how they know innately to love, divine love, all the other loves that are out there, bring them in, consolidate them, and then do your best to become an expert in love. And what this means in real everyday terms is, I am very awakened and aware of how I love. And setting the intention, the dictate and the focus to say, I am and will become an expert in love, which means I watch my love. I watch how I love myself. Please start there. I watch how I love others, including my dogs, cats, and whatever you got, birds, please love the birds. We love the birds. They're beautiful teachers, really, of presence. Allow yourself to watch your love and say, I bring all of these loves, love components in through all my practices and other, and then I, in a very awakened and focused way, develop my love, watch how I love, ascertain how I can improve, gather information and feedback from others in my life. How can I love better? What works? What about my love is working? How can I improve? Because as you all place focus on, I am an expert in love, you rise in your love. And we would love for humanity, each and every one of you to say, I'm an expert in love. And it is very true. If you look around the world today and think you as humans are experts in love, think again. It's something that you are just now understanding. And it goes back to the teaching earlier is you're just now discovering the human. And we mean that. You are just now discovering love. And we mean that. Now, the word love has been around a long time, thousands of years, teaching of love. Love your neighbor as yourself. You may have heard that before. It's been around for a long time. It's taken a long time for humanity to really start to catch on to what love really is and means and how to show it in ways that we would call expert. So allow yourself not to be hard on you, but to say in a challenging way and lift you, I can do this. I can become an expert in love. I love myself and others in expert ways. Does this answer your question? Yeah, yeah, this is great guidance. And is there, I'm thinking as, as you speak about that, about another form of love, a sacred love, a sacred relationship, such as what Mary Magdalene and Jesus or Yeshua had. And I know there's a word for it, homo something or what, but, but we'll call it a sacred love for me right now, is it possible for two individuals today, two humans today, to have that kind of sacred love like they did, to embody that, to go to those places where they went? For sure. We would say we know some do. Listen, don't limit yourself. Whatever love you're called to, please explore it. There's lots of love out there. There is high sacred love. There's all different kinds of love. Yes, we see that love exists in the world today and many others. So allow oneself, whoever you may be, to say, what's my love? I discover my love. If you're scared of love, if you're scared of touching love, we encourage you lovingly and gently put your toe in the water. Move forward in that direction. Allow yourself to discover and know love. If fear is limiting your love, and we know many of you experience this, we won't talk a lot about fear today, but allow yourself to say, I move beyond that fear into love. Fear is a big limiter. 
you know, I'm scared of this relationship. I'm scared of doing this. I'm scared of trying this. I'm scared of going deeper, broader and wider and bigger, whatever it may be, higher. Allow yourself to say, I'm going to try it. I'm going to step forward. Because as you become experts in love, you know a lot of things. Experience, know, grow, and please love. Does this answer your question? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. I want to um, finally ask you a question about how things present. I, I'm really fascinated with that right now. So I'll give you an example of me, and of course, it's much broader for everybody here. So recently, ish, I was asked to speak at an event in Mexico City. And I was asked to speak at a ufology event. And I thought, well, that's very interesting. I've never spoken about that. I've always spoken about media and books and interviews. But I said yes, because mm. it felt energetically correct. And I got a sense like I was a little bit mystified. But I thought, if I'm being asked, I believe the universe is supporting me to go in that direction. So there's a yes to that. And then I decided I'm going to create a film. Uh, and then I'm going to interview amazing people like yourself and ask them some very relevant questions and I'll be able to display just bits, sound bites from the film. So I'm in the middle of that creation. And everybody I asked out of seven amazing channels, every single one of them said yes to my project. I was then asked to moderate a panel at a very, like a, a huge event next year. Um, and it was on ET origins. And so this is interesting to me because I was, I was a skeptic for a long time. I didn't believe in UFOs or extraterrestrials. It's very interesting because I was also very frightened uh, because of what media displayed. But here I am, I've made this huge transformation. I drunk the Kool-Aid. I feel this is truth. I'm fully into this conversation. I love it. I find it fascinating and exciting and not scary at all. And I'm witnessing these opportunities come to me. And I'm witnessing my involvement in shamanism right now and all the classes I'm taking. And I'm just seeing what presents in my saying yes and all that keeps unfolding. And I'm wondering, like, what is this? Am I supposed to be an ambassador? I'm stepping into new territory, um, being way more visible, really trusting getting up on a stage, you know, potentially with 4,000 people out there and so forth. What is that about when in someone's life, this occurrence starts happening and there's like a momentum and it's very exciting, but really new. Um, I would love to know my place more in this, what it means and, and how this might help other people. Well, we'll, we'll give you a few things to think about, dear Debbie, and thank you for sharing this with us and with all who watch. <clears throat> we mentioned before you're very advanced. You're an advanced soul. And Debbie, as a being or personality, is advanced. You're a teacher, you're a speaker, and many other different things. So as opportunities present themselves, and there will be many more to come, what this is, is a diagram, if you will, of your life. Now, you have freedom, you have choice, you choose. There is, in the soul incarnation, a game plan. We'd like to do these things. So as people become soul aligned, which as we see you, we're not reading you, but as we see you, we see you in pretty close soul alignment. Do you feel this way? Yes, very much good. so. I'm very pleased with my life and what I do. Very good. And those are all indications of soul alignment. There's a few little zigzags here and there, but that's part of your process because you do push in a way. So as one is soul aligned one knows their mission and purpose which many people are familiar with this concept and knows their path forward so your your soul holds your stipulations your definitions your waypoints the basic game plan for your life your soul is your best guide now you debbie as the being that you are can choose can choose can choose. You have free choice. You choose. So 
your soul is always saying, hey, can you do this? And it, it knows. Your soul is the knower. And Debbie, as the personality, is the one who seeks and finds, figures things out, thinks through things, <clears throat> asks questions, goes to classes, learns, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Does this make sense to you? So far, yes, I'm with you. Okay, we'll continue. So as your soul becomes more aligned with you, more present in your life, Debbie, even though it feels like you're kind of seeking and finding, you're making decisions and you're going, oh, I don't know if I want to do that or yes, I want to do that, but you're checking in, you check in, you go, I think I feel this, I think I know this, yeah, this feels right to me, all the way down to my core, I do this or I don't do this, is you are working with your soul and your soul in the extraordinary power that it is is drawing to you and designing your life around you and your choices. Are you with us? We have more, but we want to make sure you're with us. Oh, yeah, I am with you. Beautiful. So as things, opportunities, speaking opportunities, whatever it may be, people, places and things are all drawn to you. It is in soul accord. Now, there is what we would call a grand plan. Keep in mind, it is always managed and there is choice, free choice, movement of timelines, movement, movement of a lot of things, but there is a grand plan of movement. That's why we say we know humanity makes it, we know Earth makes it because we've seen it in future timelines and in other things. So Earth makes it, Earth makes it, Earth makes it, humanity makes it, it makes it, humanity makes it. You make it, Debbie. In your life, we're not reading you, but we're giving you an answer to your question because you asked it, is there is so much expansiveness ahead of you, get ready. Because more things are drawn to you because you are in alignment with your soul. You're saying yes to the things that you need to say yes to, and you're saying no to the things that you need to say no to, and you're moving forward in soul accord. And in this, you are able to rise and complete everything. You as Debbie, in the essence of Debbie, Debbie, your soul, your divine presence wishes you to do. You're completing everything that you are called to do. And when people say I have a calling, generally, generally, because there's a lot of things out there, what we see is it is the soul calling or giving you the heart's desire to do something to drive, to do this, that, to have this show, to have done the radio show and all the things that you do. So as we encourage you, what we would say is check in with your soul, stay in soul alignment, which we think is pretty easy for you. Your soul, you see eye to eye with your soul, if you will. <laughs> so continue and more things will be drawn to you. And yes, it is part of an overall plan at the soul and grand plan level that you do and accomplish all the things that you do. Does this help you? Yeah, that was awesome. Powerful. A moving. Thank you so much. Sure. And yeah. I feel like, you know, I just want to connect to the audience on this, that it is this idea of discernment I just feel like it's so important. You know, we have a joke in our society, FOMO, fear of missing out. And I don't know how other people experience life. I think there's uh, an abundance of opportunities and it really is like, there's something for me that needs to be a gatekeeper because my energy and being is finite. And with this buffet of possibilities to, you know, suss out, this is right. Like, this feels exciting. This feels like a yes. That feels like, mm, I, not so much. Because I feel like it's a, like a prime directive because the more I'm in saying yes to and inviting in what works, what resonates, what excites, that it creates even more of that, right? It lets the universe know, I'm here for it, <laughs> bring it. And um, wow, I, I'm gonna wanna check in with you too because you know, in the future, the idea that there's even more coming, it's like, wow, it's been, it's like pretty delicious right now. So I'm a and, yes for that too. 
may we add a few more points? I would love that. Thank you. So for you specifically, we would say get really excited and enjoy every moment of your life. Now listen to this. There's a lot of humans moving through a lot of things. And the reason why difficult things happen to people is because you've got to move through to get there. You've got to move through the low stuff, put it to rest in order to move high to new different kinds of things. Closure, 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 closure. It is a way existence works. Now listen to this, please. This is a secret of existence. Existence rises based upon completions, closures. Close it off, shut it off, it's done, it's done, it's done. It's healed, get it out of the way, it's done. That's one of the reasons why he and we in support of him do timelines work and why timelines is a word and a subject in the human consciousness right now because it supports the thesis and the logic everything is built in a way on logic that is a secret of existence by the way is that as logic sequences get completed and closed they lock and move out of the way and as that happens, new and higher logic sequences and opportunities and frequencies and vibrations and all kinds of things come to you. So we're talking about the human race, generally speaking now. So those who move through difficult situations are trying to close out logic sequences, complete them so they can shut and move out of the way. That's why many times, but not all the time, bad things happen to good people wow. many people ask that question and what we say is because completion you are completing old and tired logic sequences so that they can close and go so there are people on the world in the world inside of the world who are working through difficult things they have tough lives and they are closing and completing old logic, old things, old energies, frequencies, vibrations, all these kinds of things, so they can go and the human can rise and experience new and brighter and higher things. Make sense? Makes sense, yep. Now you, dear Debbie, we're not looking at your past, we're looking at you and kind of listening to your soul talk, you have a beautiful soul, shimmering and delightful, is you have a good life. You're moving through higher logic patterns, higher things, so that you can experience them and raise them slightly. You're not working on closing any difficult logic patterns. People who have difficult lives are, but you are experiencing high logic patterns to bring in your know, your frequency, your vibration, your soul experience to energize the levels in which you work which are advanced levels of spiritual teachings and understandings and way to be so <clears throat> for you our suggestion our encouragement our pleading to you is enjoy every moment of your life here and now enjoy your past and savor every opportunity that comes to you they will continue to come you have a beautiful and blessed, gorgeous life. Enjoy it to the fullest. Does this help you? I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am overflowing with joy and love for you right now and connection. And I am so deeply grateful for mm -hmm. you being with us today and in the way you're being with us. Thank you, Metatron. And we thank you and we will end with this. We call the human beautiful. We'll call you beautiful if you'd like, because the human, no matter what level you are on, is moving through generally a challenging experience. There is love and light, there is beauty, but there is challenge, there is difficulty. Every day in some way can bring a challenge. Today you had someone cancel on your show, yet you turned the challenge into opportunity. You brought us on and we are grateful for that, but it is through the challenge that you grew.
Everyone experiences challenge and grows. So you as the human, we call you all, all who watch this, beautiful, 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 beautiful beings. Because you do the hard work and you grow. And with this, Debbie, we thank you and all who watched and we go. <clears throat> and I'll just give out the website while magnificent Addison <clears throat> comes back to us. His website is addisonames.com. Addison, I don't know if you're okay to talk. I am, but yeah. I, first of all, Thank you for being the conduit for all of that amazingness to come through. I also, it was interesting, I was going to ask for a frequency healing. Oof, didn't need to. That was, I hope everybody out there felt that because, wow, the energy alone, I feel incredible right now. And the information, so beautiful. Um, we are here at the end. and. This definitely was meant to be. I know this now, 100%. So blessings to the person who had something else emergency to do because you were meant to be in this spot today. What do you next dare to dream? What is Addison and all these beautiful beings that come through him next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Mine personally? Yes. Well, let's see. <laughs> there are many, you know, I am on an amazing life journey. Mine has been one of constant growth. And so, you know, I'm just really excited about what the future holds. Um, some of it I know, some of it I don't know. Um, I hope there's a lot of love out there. I hope there's a lot of more beautiful people to come into my life. I'm really expanding my group of friends. So, you know, I continue to move into new experiences and be broad minded. So I guess maybe in a word expansiveness. I think that's probably a good answer. <laughs> expansiveness indeed. And besides your website, are there any other places and spaces where people can reach out? Anything you want to tell us about? Sure. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, well, I would say Facebook. Uh, I'm on Facebook. And also I have a channel on YouTube, which you can find both of those links on my website, addisonames.com, as you so kindly mentioned before. Um, if you like Metatron, there are some really wonderful and inspiring videos of me channeling Metatron on that YouTube channel. I also have kind of some of my own fun teachings on there as well. And some of the interviews that I've been on have been are on, that, on my YouTube channel. And um, please follow me on Facebook too. There's lots of cool content on there and a beautiful community. So those are the best places to join. Also on LinkedIn too. So if you're an awakened business leader or an enlightened business person, um, please connect with me on LinkedIn and I'd love to know you there. Phenomenal. I am super grateful to you. Thank you, my new friend. I really thank appreciate you. it. And thank you, my dear friend, my new friend, Debbie. I'm really honored to know you. And thank you everyone for watching. I appreciate you. And I'll end with this reminder that came from Metatron, which is choose high in all regards, in all things. And if you're learning about love, dip your toe and another body part in and go for it anyway, because humanity really needs divine love. And it's a healer, isn't it? Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment, please. I love reading them. And next week on the show, the guest is author, journalist, and TV personality, Nick Pope, who ran the British government's UFO program, leading the media to call him the real Fox Mulder. Nick Pope is recognized as one of the world's leading experts on UFOs, the unexplained, and conspiracy theories. Thanks for joining us and Dare to Dream today.